What's up, everybody? I'm Ernest Baker, editor-in-chief for Front Office Sports. And Front Office Sports, we've been doing a lot of things. We got very popular newsletter. We have hot social media feeds. But we are really about to get into this podcast game. I hope that you've been listening to the leadoff and, you know, getting your updates on the news that's happening in the business of sports every morning. And now we're here with a new podcast. This one is called My Other Passion. I'm going to be your host. And the concept is that we're going to talk to people. Of course, we're FOS. So we're going to talk to them about business, about their investments, about all the things that they've accomplished, you know, whether it's in the boardroom or on the field. But we want to talk to people about their other passions, as the title suggests, Um, you know, Someone who, let's say Steph Curry, he is obviously a basketball star, just won a championship this year, but he's really into golf. We have people who are famous for whatever sport that they played or whatever executive position they hold, but they're a sneakerhead or they're obsessed with video games or what have you. This podcast is about having those conversations. Uh, I'm really looking forward to all the conversations we're going to have you know, all the cool insights that we get to share with you all. I think we're all going to learn a lot. It's going to be inspiring. It's going to be funny. And, you know, I want you to subscribe. I want you to like. I want you to come back every week. We're going to do this on Wednesdays. And we are going to talk to people about their passions, the ones that you know them for, the ones that you might not know about. It's going to be a lot of fun. So with that said, we're kicking off with the first episode today. I have a very cool, interesting, smart guest by the name of Frankie Munez. You might know him from Malcolm in the Middle, the massive sitcom hit of the 2000s where he was the star titular character. Um, He's also been in a bunch of other movies. You know, if you're a millennial like me, you might have grown up seeing Miracle in Lane 2 on Disney Channel, Agent Cody Banks. Uh, personal favorite of mine, my dog Skip, was a banger. Uh, but we're talking about something that is different from acting. In fact, acting at this point is kind of like his other passion because his focus is on motorsports and his focus is on being a race car driver. And he's been racing for like 15, 20 years now. Since he got in the game as an actor, he's always had this interest in motorsports. Um, you know, he started out doing some celebrity racing and then he really turned it up. And now he's saying that he's going to be in NASCAR next year. Uh, he's been working super hard towards that. He has his racing team, Munez Racing. And I think it's really interesting. This guy has a lot to say about Hollywood, about fame. Uh, he's a he's a prolific investor. Um, he's a bit of a real estate mogul, if I'm being real. Like he probably downplay it, but you know, dude told me that he's had like 26 houses, and you know, also he loves cars, so he had like 36 cars. Just a lot of cool stuff that I think everyone will get a lot of enjoyment out. It's gonna be uh, a good listen. I'm not gonna hype it up anymore. You know, let's go ahead and and get Frankie on here and welcome to my other passion. I am excited for you to join us on this journey. I'm just getting comfortable. I'm in the studio. You know, this is a first for me. So let's warm up together. Uh, We're going to learn some things. I I welcome your feedback. You know, you can hit me up on Twitter at Ernest Baker. Uh, You can email me. I'm going to just throw it out there. Ernest at FOS.company. Let's talk about it. You know, make some suggestions for guests. Uh, segments, things that you want to hear, things that you didn't like, although hopefully there's not many of those. Um, Yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. This is it, the putt to win the tournament. Everything's on the line. If you sink it, the championship is yours. And it seems like you should, but on the backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. You can't see anything. Is this how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and a bunch of outdated finance software? To see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. See, NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system. It gives you the full picture of your business, and you need that type of visibility and control over your finances, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, all the things that go into a business 
NetSuite will give you everything that you need all in one place. You can automate manual processes. You can close your books in a timely fashion. And the best thing is that using NetSuite is going to keep you ahead of your competition. 93% of surveyed businesses increase their visibility and control after upgrading to NetSuite. And it'd be pretty awesome if you could say the same about your business. Over 31,000 businesses already use NetSuite. This summer, NetSuite has a special financing program for those who are ready to upgrade. All you have to do is go to netsuite.com slash my other passion. So yeah, what are you waiting for? Go to netsuite.com slash my other passion for this special one of a kind financing offer on the number one financial system for growing businesses. Again, remember it, go there. Change your business, netsuite.com slash my other passion. So without further ado, I'm very happy to welcome Frankie Munez. Uh, you might know him for his acting. You might know him for his race car driving. But we're here with him today on the My Other Passion podcast. And Frankie, how you doing? I'm great. I'm uh, super excited to chat with you and uh, be on the show. Thanks for Thanks for having me. Yeah, 100%. Well, let's get right into it. We have a lot to talk about. I mean, you have such a multifaceted career. You've been all over the place. But I think a lot of people might start with acting and with Malcolm in the Middle. But I'd actually like to start with sports because I know that's where okay. your focus is right now. And mm -hmm. before we get into the specifics of all your motorsports ambitions, I just have to ask, like, how do you feel about sports? Do you love sports? Are you a big fan? I saw you tweet that like you think you could have made it to the NBA. So <laughs> tell me how you feel about sports. I mean, sports honestly are my life. You know, growing up, uh, I played every single sport as a kid. You know, I'd go from, you know, a soccer game to baseball to football and basketball. I played tennis, golf. I mean, literally, I, I couldn't imagine my life without sports. And then now, obviously, as I've gotten older, like watching sports as a fan, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, it's just you know, something that you can be passionate about. You know, it makes you happy. It makes you sad. It makes you mad. You know, they bring out all the emotions. So I, I, I love I love sports, you know, in general. Okay. Do you have any cool stories? Obviously, someone like you, I think, gets access that's a little bit different from everyone else sometimes. So, like, you know, during all your years of just being this famous guy, did you get to meet someone, you know, in the locker room or like sit courtside and have some type of cool experience? You gotta, gotta let us know. Well, I grew up a, a huge LA Clippers fan, which I'm sure not a lot of people have ever said to you, but uh, I was a huge Clippers fan. I went to, you know, all the games. I sat courtside. I became friends with a bunch of the players. Um, actually, when I was, I think, 14 or 15, Alvin Gentry was the coach of the Clippers and he signed uh, to be my chaperone. And literally, I went on the Clippers plane. I used to go on the road trips with them. You know, I went to Seattle and, you know, kind of a crazy, crazy story to think about, you know, for me, because like I was just such a huge fan. So like I was so excited to be a part of it. Um, story that I don't think I've ever told any. I mean, I've maybe told my mom, but I was on the plane with the Clippers flying back from Seattle and the plane was struck by lightning. What? And a tire exploded and caught on fire. And I was obviously scared. Everyone was scared. I'm with all these, you know, you know, big basketball players and, and everyone's screaming. And I had this weird realization. I was like, wow, I'm going to die with the Clippers. And I was <laughs> actually semi okay with it. It was just like, a, I don't know, <laughs> a cool thing, but I survived obviously. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. I did not know that planes can get struck by lightning and that everyone yeah. can land safely. So I'm yeah. glad you're here. I'm glad you didn't die. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I have a lot of fun stories with sports. You know, like I, I, I've gotten to play basketball with like Magic Johnson and, you know, a bunch of uh, my, you know, basketball heroes and golf. I play with a bunch of athletes, you know, a bunch of baseball players. And stuff it's like cool. That. It's cool to name drop. Magic Johnson's amazing. Um, you know, I, I may have drained some threes on him. I'm just saying, you know, but okay. no, I, I played I played in this uh, NBA entertainment league for a bunch of years and there were like ex NBA players, some WNBA players, and then a bunch of, you know, actors, performers and stuff like that. And, um, we won the championship a few years and, you know, I, uh, I loved basketball. Like I, I'm, I'm five foot five. I'm not, I, I'm definitely not the size of a basketball player, but I could shoot. And, um, you know, everyone was afraid of me getting the ball because they knew I was going to score. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and I, I hooped growing up and definitely learned 
yeah, maybe height will impact, you know, making it to college and NBA. But when you're growing up, don't es- don't underestimate the yeah. five five guy because he'll he'll drain <laughs> on you from the corner. All day, all day. And, I yeah, just I used to run you. the baseline, go to corner to corner, and just drain threes. <laughs> nice. Well, respect. Um, so obviously, a lot of the focus is on motorsports and race car driving, but I have to ask because it's sort of, it's related. It's not just out of nowhere. I feel like in my mind and as like a pop culture obsessive, I wonder if this tweet that you sent years ago has anything to do with how you've been able to set yourself up in motorsports. Uh So, all right. right. So I personally think it is among the greatest tweets ever. Um, This is, (laughs) you're you're probably familiar. This is when I heart Mountain Dew said to you, (laughs) your acting is just awful. Sorry, but it is. And you replied, yeah, but being retired with $40 million at 19 has not been awful. Good luck moving out of your mom's house before you're 35. So, um, one what do you make of that interaction like however many years later and also can you just tell us because we're a business podcast and we're a business publication so i know you know in some circumstances it's like not the most tasteful talking about your money and everything but you know but this is what we do we talk to people about their net worth about their investments and i want to hear not you don't have to flex on us but just legitimately what is it like making that much money as a teenager you know, do you save? Do you blow it all? And also, has that money helped you set up yourself for racing? Yeah. So, you know, going back to your, the tweet, I I feel like the internet. There's a lot of positive, a lot of positive thing that, that the internet brings, but there's also a lot of negativity because it gives access to people to kind of sling mud. You know what I mean? And I never respond, but every once in a while, you, know, you got to punch back. So like I was, I think I was polite. I, I agreed with him that maybe my acting is awful, but what wasn't awful. And I don't know. I just, I don't know. I was in a mood that day and, and I, and I happened to say it, but, but no, in, in, in all seriousness, like, you know, I am very fortunate of the career that I had as a child. You know, I, I, you know, made a, a, a good amount of money and, and then I've been involved in a lot of investments and, and different businesses and I've owned businesses and I've run businesses and I, I, I love probably that aspect of, of, uh, of life the most. And, uh, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to where at 36 years old, you know, I can look back at all the things I've done as an actor, as a race car driver. Previously, I was a drummer in a band. Like I said, I owned an olive oil company. I've, I've owned a bunch of businesses. Um, I can look back and make the choice to go after my dream of, being in motorsports, you know, I feel like I have unfinished business in that world. And uh, I'm definitely fortunate enough to where I can I can put in the time and the effort to to, to try to reach that dream. You know what I mean? And uh, I'll forever, I'll forever be grateful for the opportunities I had as a kid. And uh, obviously, the money I made and stuff like that. But, uh, but no, I, I, I like to think that I've been pretty smart with my money. You know, I, I, I uh, I'm very, I'm completely involved in every aspect of like my finances. Um, I grew up with a business manager and I realized that I didn't like not knowing kind of what was going on, but I was so young. So I had to learn it. I taught myself. I literally do my own taxes. I don't have an account. I do everything myself wow. because I, I, uh, I feel like it makes you just more aware. You know, mm-hmm. it's, um, I and you hear a lot of- about Hollywood people getting ripped off cause they don't know what's going on oh, with yeah. their money. Yeah. I I mean, I have stories, you know, I have a lot of stories of that happening to me and I, I learned from them, you know, but my excuse was that I was 15, 16 years old. Like I didn't even know what, like how to write a check at that point. You know what I mean? I knew I was making a ton of money, but once I finally kind of started realizing that I realized I wanted to gain control of it. And, uh, and, but it made me more aware, like when you are physically writing the check or you're physically kind of, you know, putting everything into your books and all that kind of stuff, it makes you aware of, it's very easy to spend money. You know what I mean? It can go very quickly. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I, I've, I've always been interested, like I said, in business and finding ways to make my money grow. And, and, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't know if it necessarily, I don't, it, it doesn't hurt me getting into motorsports, obviously, because like I said, the position I'm in allows me to kind of go after that dream. But at the same time, like, you know, 
because I have money isn't the only reason that I'll be able to go racing. You have to have the ability, you have to have the skill, you have to have the opportunities. And, and then when you have those opportunities, you have to take advantage of them and, and, and show that you have the speed and, you know, it's the money can't buy you wins, right? Like right. you have to go out there and perform and uh, I'm, uh, I'm ready to do that. Well, I want to ask about NASCAR and even, you know, Indy 500, because I know I've read that those are the goals and that's where you would like to get. But can I just ask real quick, what is something that money can buy that you might have a fun story about? Because I know that you're saving, but I know you had to stunt like a time or two, you know. I was really bad, honestly, when I was a kid or like I say kid, like 16, 17, 18. I had at one time I had 36 cars at one time and uh it was really annoying to move them to get the one i wanted out um probably i don't regret it because i loved cars like cars were my my passion um i don't wear fancy clothes i don't wear fancy shoes like i don't spend my money on a lot of things that you know a lot of maybe celebrities do but cars was my thing and uh i but yeah i was i was 16 i you know i had a 56 Porsche Speedster, I had Maseratis, Ferrari, I had everything, you know what I mean? And um, it was just my passion. So that's the one thing that I think I really was kind of crazy with. But otherwise, I don't know. I, 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 I get more joy out of saving money, as dumb as it sounds. Maybe I shouldn't admit this. I get more joy out of saving money than I ever did spending it or like buying something. You know what I mean? And like, that perspective I will, I will comes use from... A coupon. I will use a coupon and that feels good to save that 25 cents. <laughs> and that perspective comes from growing up because I see you're a father. I got two kids of my own. And, you know, I even, I remember this Kanye quote that I always stuck with me, regardless of how you feel about him. He was talking to someone about fashion. He was like, I don't even get dressed anymore. I just make sure my kids are fresh. And it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, it's much different now. And so yeah. I understand where you're coming from with that. Um, so thanks for that background. I had a crown Victoria at 16, um, before I upgraded to a Buick Regal. So, you know, not not quite on your level, but you know, um, I'll I'll take it very, very cool to hear about a collection like that. Do you still have all those cars? No, you you know, it's funny when I, I originally started racing in, in 2005, my passion for street cars went away. Okay. You know what I mean? Because to me, there was nothing fast enough, nothing cool enough. You know, I, I, I kind of got more practical in the sense that I was like, I want to, I want something that gets me where I need to go. And then I also realized that I cared so much about my cars. Like I didn't want to scratch. I didn't want any door dings. And I kept ha- having cars like keyed, stolen, you know, rocks come up and hit. And I was always so frustrated. And I'm like, I want a car I can just drive and not care as much about. And, uh, but I saw some cool stuff, but not like that. No, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I've tamed it down uh, a ton for sure. Okay. Well, talking about the race cars, you know, you've been racing for a long time. I should have known I was like 11 when I watched Miracle in Lane 2. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, those Disney Channel original movies used to hit. They were, um, they were, the, they were legit. <laughs> yeah. And um, so when I heard about you racing, like for the first time, I wasn't, like entirely shot. I was like, Oh yeah. I like associate him with racing from my childhood. Yeah. Um, yeah. but NASCAR, Indy, just the whole professional, you know, route of making it as a race car driver. Uh, how's that been going for you? Obviously, you know, anybody can Google and see how it's going, but yeah. you know, from the heart, how has it been? And also, do you think you can really get to NASCAR? Like how close are you to something like that? Yeah, I you know, to give a little bit of a backstory, I started racing in 2005. I was still doing Malcolm in the Middle. I did the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach Pro Celebrity Race, which I won. And I thought that was going to be kind of the only race I got to do. It was an amazing experience. I was definitely hooked. But like in that same sense, how do you become a race car driver? Like, you know, that's that's like saying how do you become an astronaut? I don't know, you know, you know, like I don't know, right. you know. But a, a pro team approached me and they gave me a test just kind of for fun after I'd won that race. And I happened to be pretty quick. So they signed me and and then I was a race car driver. So I did a, a year of Formula BMW and then I did the Champ Car Atlantic Championship for three years. Um, I had an IndyCar ride for 2010, but I had broke my back, pins in my hand, you know, so I, I missed that whole season. Racing is one of those things that I truly felt, I truly feel is my, my where I'm supposed to be, where I'm really the most passionate about and I want to put in the most work and effort. 
And I always knew when I had stopped racing in 2009, 2010, that I was going to go back. And at that, t- in that same sense, life moves on and life goes fast. And then other things started happening. And I joined a band, another thing that had a baby. And it took having my son and looking at him and realizing I want him to grow up watching me reaching for my dreams and going after the thing that I'm really passionate about. And kind of in that, in that, uh, in that team, you know, racing camaraderie and, and, and all that, I, I wanted him to grow up around that just to, to be proud of the work ethic that I show. And I felt like, look, I'm not getting any younger. If I'm going to do it, I got to do it now. And I, and I want it more than ever. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going for it. And I, I switched my focus to the stock car world, um, try to make it into NASCAR. And as far as do I think it's going to become a reality? I, I know it's going to become a reality. Um, I, I'm, I'm putting everything that I can control behind it. I'm training, I'm, I'm in the car testing, I'm racing. And, uh, we're just kind of trying to finalize, uh, some deals and stuff and where I'll be driving, but you will see me on a, on a racetrack, uh, in NASCAR next year. (laughs) All right. Well, you heard it here. Um, and you know, I'm wishing you the best at this point. Would you consider yourself a race car driver first, you know, versus I know, I know you've done acting, you've done music, but right now you look yourself in the mirror. Are you the guy who was on like this huge sitcom or are you the guy who's about to be in NASCAR? Without sounding cheesy, like, I think you could be both, right? You know, cause my, my past, I'm not, I'm proud of my past. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to run from my past at all. But in that same sense, I know what motivates me during the day, what makes me go to the gym and lifting and working on my cardio and, and eating healthier and doing everything I can to be ready to be in the race car. Like every decision that I make right now is, is it, does it help me be a better race car driver? Does it help me get there or help my body be prepared for when I am in the, in the, in the car? And, uh, so yeah, I, I, I think of myself as a race car driver a hundred percent because you know, I'm competing against race car drivers, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm competing against people who since they were five, six, seven, eight years old, that's been their dream and their passion. And for them to put food on the table, they've got to be successful in that world. I'm not, you know, jumping into, you know, racing against people as a hobby, like I'm racing against the best drivers in the world. And if I want to be one of those, I've got to work just as hard, if not harder to, uh, to, to be at that level and and be ready when I have the opportunity. All right. So I'll, Love hearing that because, you know, the concept of this podcast is my other passion. And so, you know, knowing that you are a race car driver, but you've had this passion for acting that we all know you for, or, you know, we could view it the other way where obviously you came up acting and you pursued another passion. But I want to ask, how do you keep going? And maybe this could be a lesson for everybody. Uh, You have not won a lot or really like at all professionally. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's pretty inspiring to talk to you. You're like dedicated as hell. And uh, I just wonder how you reconcile that, you know, how you keep going and not just say, damn, I'm not good enough. Yeah. You know, I I think my work ethic in general, like I, I don't expect it to be easy. You know what I mean? If there's 40 guys in a race, 39 of them lose, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? There's only one winner. Um, this, this year, since I started in stock cars, I've finished second a bunch of times, third, you know, so I'm, I'm right there. I'm close, you know, but at the, in that same sense, that's the motivation. You know what I mean? Like there's always room for improvement and I want to be the best. I want, I want to get there. Not just, you know, I, I'm not trying to prove it to anyone else, but I'm also trying to do it for myself, you know, cause it's, it's my, it's my true passion, but I don't know. I think it's easy to get discouraged. You know what I mean? In, in any, in any walk of life, right. As an actor, think of when people want to start acting, they go on hundreds, thousands of auditions and some people might not ever book a job ever. You know what I mean? But yeah. there's a lot of rejection, but you got to keep going. You got to keep fighting and be ready when you have the opportunity, um, to, to, to do your best. And, and that's what I'm doing. You know, I, uh, you know, obviously I want to win races. Like it's not, it's not fun when you don't win, but at the same time, like I know I'm, uh, I have a lot to learn, you know what I mean? So I, I didn't expect to go into the stock car world and immediately be winning races. I, I I've actually exceeded my expectations with how quickly I, I came up to speed in those cars. But, uh, at the same time, um, until I'm on the top step of the podium, there's still work to be done. And, and uh, I'll keep fighting. But one thing about racing 
like obviously the goal is to win but at the same time like you know maybe my goal next year if i get into when i get into nascar you know of the, of the 40 guys who start the race if i finish in the top 20 that could be a, that's a huge win for a lot of drivers a lot of yeah. uh, teams you know and all that. there's a lot of you know it's a, it's a team sport like sure it's me driving the car but you know the whole crew everything's got to you know be put into into place and um in order to, to make a win happen but you know there's there's victories within the races you know what i mean maybe it's you know finishing on the lead lap cool we did that next let's check the next box off now you know we want to pass 10 cars in the race or qualify better all those things keep you kind of moving forward and uh and progressing but like i said someone's going to finish 40th i don't want it to be me it won't be me but <laughs> You know what I mean? But you know what I mean? Like, you know, that's, that's part of the sport. You know, not everybody can win, can win the race. Yeah, totally. I mean, most of the greats uh, in whatever field, music, acting, sports, they all had a lot of L's before they got, yeah. you know, their big break. No, and, and, and you've got, it, it's really kind of how you, you learn from those losses, right? You learn from the, the negativity <laughs> and apply it the next time, you know, uh, to the situation that makes you improve. You know what I mean? You, you can't, no one's going to come out in anything and just be the best. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's how you kind of handle the, the defeat, um, that makes the people, the, the, the greats, you know what I mean? If you, if you think of the greats in any, in any sport or any business, you know, the people who keep fighting are the ones that, uh, get to the top. Well, also speaking of greats, um, I love and think it's really interesting how, there is a precedent for actors getting into racing. I mean, two of the greatest ever, Paul Newman and Steve McQueen, yep. both race professionally. I think yep. Um, yep. Uh, I think it was Steve who came in second place to Mario Andretti, which, you know, that was like his best finish, which is yeah, crazy, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and you were down at NASCAR. You were at Daytona with like the ARCA yep. test, right? So yep, I went yep. to da I went to Daytona 500 this year. Nice. Um, I was doing some work with College Racing, uh -huh. uh, which was really cool. I got to be in yeah. like pit row and everything. And then also That's went cool. to the clash at the Coliseum, which was uh -huh. insane because that is so small. It was like the yeah, loudest yeah. place I've ever to Daytona been. Daytona too, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was crazy. Um, but how was that? for you um you did that test you got to actually like be at daytona like although it's not the 500 it's a dream yeah. venue oh, yeah. um, how did that feel it was awesome it, you know, th that whole deal came up very last minute like literally the night before i was driving at daytona i didn't even know i was going to daytona um but a team uh, owner called me he was like you need to get down here i'll put you in a car do some laps um I said to myself, I have to take advantage of this opportunity because if I never, ever get to drive a race car again, the fact that I can do laps at speed at Daytona, you know, that's, that's a, a bucket list item. So went in, I, I unfortunately didn't get to run with any other cars, you know, cause, uh, like they kind of mostly ran in the morning. I ran in the afternoon. So I would have loved to be on the track with other people be in the draft, you know, cause that's, you know, obviously at Daytona, you need the draft to go really, really quick. But uh, it was still an amazing experience. And like I said, like, obviously, the, the goal is I'll be racing there next year. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, it, it, it was just such a cool experience. I'd been there before. I actually drove the pace car of the Daytona 500 in 2001. Um, nice. And uh, so definitely different experience going 60 miles an hour in a pace car and going 200 miles an hour in the actual NASCAR. It's a, a different, different beast for sure. Yeah, you've really been doing this racing like from from the jump. Uh, you know, it's a yeah, big part I mean, of your life. Uh, yeah, it, it is. You know, I uh, there was obviously a big break in there. You know, from two thousand nine into two thousand twenty two. You know, thirteen year uh, time off. But at that same time, like I've I've always been passionate about cars, driving, racing. Um, but even from like a business aspect, you know, uh, I want to be involved in motorsports in some capacity for the rest of my life. Right. So if it's the next couple of years of me driving, awesome. But then, you know, my goal is to be a team owner or be involved in the sport from a business aspect in some capacity because it's where my passion is, you know, and, uh, and, uh, like I said, I love business and if I can tie the two of them together, that, that, that makes it even, even better, a more, more fulfilling, fun life for sure. Yeah, I mean, have you thought about a career in broadcasting? Just I saw you in the booth earlier this year. Um, yeah. Was that a novelty thing, or are you like, oh, I could see this being a thing too? You know what shocked me 
was how good those guys are. When you're there in person and you're trying to see everything that's going on and there's people talking in your ears and there's videos going on and there's, re, you know, that you've got car radio, the, the fact that they can so naturally make it, like even right now, I can't even get my point across. <laughs> I'm trying to say it. They're so good at it. Um, I would love to be involved in some capacity in broadcasting, uh, but I, I definitely would need to work on it. You know what I mean? Like, like anything, you know, if you want to be good at it, you got to work on it. And uh, I was, I was shocked how good on the fly and how quick and witty and in, insightful they were. And uh, I'm, I'm better. I was better in the booth when they would ask me a question because I can mm-hmm. answer the question, you know, but if right. you want me to just randomly talk and about what I see, I, I'm seeing so much. I don't even know what to say. So it was a cool experience, but I hope to do uh, more of it in the future for sure. Yeah. It's like, you can't have any dead space. You always yeah. have to be talking. It needs to be insightful. And I think people wonder like, why do these guys get paid so much? I think Troy Aikman just got like 90 million to go to ESPN and you know, maybe that's a lot of money. Like you can judge that sub- subjectively, but it's a hard job. It's not just getting in oh, there it, talking about sports. No. And there, and to be honest, you know, we started that day, like they have meetings starting at like 9 a.m. And they talk about kind of the segments and where we're going to go and who we're going to talk to on the radio. And, and they really kind of, and there's such a huge production behind it. It's a big, big thing. And I, like I said, I, I didn't know what to expect going into it. I was grateful that they asked me to be a part of it, but I, I literally looked at every one of those guys. I go, you guys are good at this because it's not easy for sure. So uh, made me appreciate the commentary commentary for all sports more because, you know, you got to be you got to be on. You got to be witty. And, you know, you can't you can't hesitate. Right. But you got to make sense, too. <laughs> totally. Well, I uh, love hearing all of this about racing, about you know, you're acting and I have a few more questions about that, but as such, like, a you know, a diverse, well-rounded guy, when it comes to your passions, I'd like to ask about some other ones. Like for instance, you were a drummer, a band was King's foil. Yep. Yep. And so like, look, I can, I think we can infer that you love music, but I'm more yeah. interested in like, what do you listen to? Like, what, what are you yeah. into? What's on your playlist? You know, are you, are you, are you into hip hop? Are you into, you know, classic rock? Like what is Frankie Muniz bumping in his whip in his headphones? Oh man. I'm, I've gotten so bad with music. I, you know, I feel like I remember my mom being in the car with me and me listening to like the top 40 radio station and her being like, what is this music? I don't know what you're talking about. I feel like that's me now. Like yeah. I listen to top 40. I'm like, what are, what are these kids? You know what I mean? What is this? This isn't music. This racket. No, I'm, I'm kidding. No, but no, I, it's yeah. true, dog. I look at the hot 100 and I'm a music. I'm like, I came from music journalism yeah. and I still will look at the charts sometimes like, nah, I'm definitely in my 30s now. It's well, different. I watch, you know, I watch like the award shows, or the Grammys or the Billboard Music Awards and stuff. And I'm like, how do I used to know everybody. Mm-hmm. How do I not know who that is? You know what yeah. I mean? Um, but no, to be honest, I, I you, you're, you might judge me on this. And I've never told anyone this. But my wife, uh, every time I'd get in her car, she was listening to K-Love. You know, like the Christian rock pop station. Yeah. And I was like, you listen to, K- you listen to K-Love? And I started realizing... I love the melodies. I love the songs. They make me, they get me out of a bad mood. You know what I mean? So I hate to say I've turned that old that I listen to Caleb. Okay. Well, you know, there's some Christian rock bangers. Like I think a thing that happened a lot in the two thousands and probably in general is there were these bands with like real hot songs that people didn't realize were like Christian, for instance, isn't Switchfoot. Like, yeah, switch foot. Okay, switch so foot. meant to live. Yeah. Da, na, 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 na. Oh, like yeah. that, what a banger! Like, oh yeah, um, and failed attempts to fly. Da, 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 da. And like, so there's yeah. that. Sorry for like nerding out, but that's just no, that's I my jam. That. I think it POD just, was it, isn't POD no. alive? They're they're well, on some skillet, skillet. You know, like there's some hard bands. <laughs> I, there was a, a band that actually we went on tour with called Red. Yeah. And their whole sets like flames and fire and explosions. And it's like Christian metal, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, but no, I, you know, I, it was one of those things like with music is so powerful, right? Like it, it, it can change your mood. It can bring memories back. It can, it can, you know, bring you to a happy place, whatever it is. And, and I realized that 
for me, when I put on that station or some of those songs, some of those songs come on, they really do lift me up. And uh, I, I don't mean to sound cheesy in that sense, but you know, especially now having my son, like I want him to have like a positive influence when it comes to life and music and, and all that. And, and, uh, but no, I, I listen to everything to be honest. Like I, I'm, uh, I'm kind of all over the map. You know, I, even my band, when I was in the band, like we were on tour with Ed Sheeran, we were on tour with third eye blind. We were on tour with Lupe Fiasco and Calvin Harris. And, you know, like we kind of fit into like a vibe that kind of went, kind of cross genre and and we were into all of it and it was uh, a really cool really cool experience but yeah I, Lupe. sorry go ahead well i was just gonna say lupe is amazing i've seen him in concert a couple times like yeah. who is your favorite rapper if you had to pick or who's just someone who you know you go to like for instance everyone puts on some some jay-z you know they they need to feel yeah. like a boss etc but who's like your guy or girl that you're just like yeah now nah, when i'm when I'm, you know, getting ready to step out or, you know, I just want to feel <laughs> that that vibe that yeah. only hip hop can give you. I know you got someone. I I would say Kendrick Lamar. Um, you know, there's a few songs I put on that just, you know, motivate you, pump you up. I don't know. I'm kind of all, like I said, I, there's a little, I, I'm all over the map. I hate to be so vague. No, but, uh, I listen. I listen to everything. And I also... I even hate when people say I listen to everything except country because it's like country got a lot of heat, like Sugarland, and you know I remember (laughs) uh, Dixie Chicks being on the TV or like Band Perry. I don't really, you know, I don't rock with the name. Like they changed their name to Lady A. I wasn't feeling what it was before, but Need Need You Now is you know it's a heater. Like so, I listen to everything, but yo. Can I just ask you before we move on to some other things, Kendrick, do you like the new album Um, or did you listen to it? I haven't listened to the whole thing yet, so I I don't want to give, give an opinion, but, (laughs) but no, I, you know, I, no, yeah, (laughs) I'm a, I'm a, I'm definitely start, like I said, feeling more and more out of touch with the current hot music. You know what I mean? Like I used to be on top of it, ready, you know, I think I just miss CDs. You know, I was so excited for, uh, to get the CD, have the booklet, put it in my car and listen to it. You know what I mean? Like right. I usually just put on like random playlists and whatever comes on, you know, like on Spotify, they, they curate those playlists for you. And it's how you learn. I, I, you find more bands and, and more music. And I, I love that aspect of it because it, it's opened my eyes a little bit. But at the same time, I also love like my my go-tos. Like, and, and I feel like a lot of it is like, late 90s early 2000s music because mm-hmm. it just brings me back to like i don't want to say simpler times but like great memories great yeah. life experiences and and the fact like i said you can put that music on and it and it, it make you feel good is uh is powerful yeah nostalgia is is real and a big influence yeah, i mean that's true i at the gym your show is always on in syndication <laughs> like like it was like <laughs> funny that we wound up talking because straight up i watched it back in the day um and like that, you know, I watched it when it was on TV, and now yeah. I see it like every like the bowling alley episode that yeah, was yeah. on yesterday at the gym. So I'm That's watching so you as like a teenager fairly often. Yeah. Um, That's funny. That's funny. But outside of that, I see you making a lot of moves in real estate on the low. Like you're always selling a house or something. Um, what is up with that? Like, are you just? That's just part of I, what happens when you. you I like have... I like to say that it's by design, and it's because uh you know I'm such a I'm a real estate mogul, but really I think I have a house buying problem, um, to where I love the the newness or or meaning like, you know we get set up in a house and it's you're excited and you get, you get to unpack and kind of put everything where you want it, and then there's an open house down the street and you go in that house you're like oh this is awesome. I've been very fortunate in real estate, you know what I mean, with some of the maybe on the whim decisions I've made have worked out for me in the end. Um, Literally, we just built the house nine months ago, and we just sold it last week and moved out, and now we're building another one. And but it, it's more trying to find where I want to to be. I I I'd like, like I said, to say that it's like a business minded or like investment decision, but it, it's really been uh, kind of a, a luck of the draw situation. Um, more than I've, you know, I, I, I've, I've, I've done better in real estate than more often than I've done bad. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, I think that's just luck to be honest. Cause it, I don't have like a, a plan behind it. You know what I mean? So yeah, I hate but, to. Well, no, I mean, 
it's really cool. Regardless, I was going to ask, like, how fruitful has that been for you? They always put out the numbers and all this stuff. Yeah. But essentially, you know, are you buying stuff and then getting to flip it for several hundred thousand or millions more than what you put into it? Uh, well, a house that we, we just built, um, it's, it's weird to talk about numbers, but I, I guess I will. We, uh, we built a house for 3.1. Yeah. And I sold it nine months later for 4.9. So that was a pretty good, uh, a quick nine month. Uh, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they don't all work like that. But uh, but no, I, you know, I, I think, um, like I said, I, I've been lucky that I've picked houses that people want, you know what I mean? So they're easy to sell. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, you know, I want to I want to be more strategic with my my real estate ventures but it's, it's really just been it's funny i was actually having the conversation with my grandpa uh last night he's 95 years old and he's only in his entire life moved two times in 95 years he's been wow. living in the same house for 60 years and i told him since 2003 i've owned 26 different houses i've moved 26 times in 19 years you know what i mean um and I think I'm ready to settle down. I'm ready to stop moving because I feel like that's all I ever do is pack up boxes and and lift them into my truck and move them. But but uh, at the same time, like like I said, it's been it, as an investor, as a you know someone you know trying to make my my, my money grow. Like it's been it's been a, a definitely a good business venture for sure. Nice. On accident. <laughs> well, um, I hope you know we can all learn a little bit something from that. I got to say, it's pretty. 26 times in however many years or 36 cars like i know you're a humble dude but you out here balling on the low frankie like jeez you know i look i don't have any watches i've got i've got some 19 dollar feelers on right now right. you know what i mean i spend the money on the things that are important to me um i also try to be smart about it you know some people it is the you know they want a collection of watches they want those kinds of things i i uh, those things never so like if you saw me like if you see me in person like i don't you you wouldn't think that i was successful <laughs> in in any genre in acting music racing whatever it may be but uh but no i you know i i i also i grew up with my grandpa and telling me save your money you know, be smart with your money and so every sure minus the cars i feel like every other decision i make i try to be as smart as possible and and i i you know I get a lot of joy out of making investments and seeing it grow and hoping that they work out. Not all of them do, but you know, that's, that's, uh, that's part of the, the fun in it. You know what I mean? Or being involved in business. Like, you know, my, my wife and I, we owned an olive oil company. We grew it, uh, you know, pretty huge in, in the three years. And then what, what was the name of it? It was called outrageous olive oils and vinegars. Um, we ended up being, uh, in the top 10, you know, most selling olive oil companies in the U S and uh, got an offer from another company to buy us out, and we 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 took it, you know. And but I love business. I love I love. There's so many things I'm passionate about. Um, and but I can take experience from everything that I've gotten to do in my life, and things that I've learned, and you know, hard lessons, you know, things that didn't work out how I wanted, and uh, apply them towards the future or other decision making, and and uh, hope to to keep keep going. And I don't know. I'm I've always felt like I was running out of time as odd as that sounds like even as a kid like I, I woke up i wake up at five in the morning and i feel like i gotta you know i want to do this and i want to accomplish this or i want to go work on my basketball skill whatever it may be right and i'm 36 now and i i want to look back at my life which i already can do but i want to look back you know when i'm 50 60 70 and feel like i i did everything i ever wanted to accomplish you know what i mean and that i didn't waste any time and uh that's what i'm i'm I'm, I'm trying to do, you know, and I, 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 uh, you get one life, you know what I mean? I want to live it to the fullest and that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I love that, man. Um, if to draw some parallels between, you know, Hollywood and some of these other places where you've had success and then, you know, race car driving where you are working to achieve that type of success, you know, in, in a lot of ways for the first time, um, mm -hmm. I guess what, how can you, compare those or how did things feel like being nominated for a golden globe you obviously i don't know if everyone knows but you have a kind of famous tweet about you know being nominated and then now watching it from home and just being yeah. like you know this 
dad like whatever <laughs> um yeah. and then you're nominated for emmy too um i know you didn't win but those are those are those are such prestigious awards that like nominee just alone becomes part of your title um yeah. and how did those things feel to you you know as a younger man and do you feel like you're sort of like chasing that again um i just someone who's had success in different fields i'm like curious how you those know, things compare it, it i only know what it's like to be me right or have the experiences that i have but in that sense i just remember when i was nominated and stuff just being so excited and kind of overwhelmed i've never felt like i belonged as odd as that sounds because i am just me i'm just this i was just this kid you know what i mean like i, I said the words that were on the page and i had a awkward looking face and it worked <laughs> you know what i mean and you know so to be nominated for you know huge awards like an emmy and a golden globe against you know huge tv actors that you know i watched my whole life was incredible in that same sense to kind of answer your question like if i feel like i'm i'm chasing that it's not that i'm chasing that you know what i mean it's that i you know i'm extremely happy with the life that i have you know, with my wife, my son, and everything I've gotten to accomplish. It's the fact that I want to be successful. You know what I mean? It's not that I have to be because I had it before. I, w I have drive, I have passion, and I and I, I want to be, now in racing, I want to be the best. I want to be the fastest. I want to win. I want to win the championship. I want to win races. You know, and I think maybe that's why I have so much passion for racing is it's something that is, you can, you you can see the result. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's in black and white. It's, 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 it's tangible. Like you, you either you get there, or you don't compared to, you know, the one thing I, I don't like as, as an actor is I can feel like I gave my best performance ever. Mm -hmm. Right. I could feel like I worked the hardest I've ever worked and I can watch it and think I'm so proud of that. But someone's opinion could be that it's the worst work I ever did, or it's the worst thing they've ever seen. Like there's I heart no mountain do. Yeah. There's, there's no way to, <laughs> actually really gay it's, it's people's opinion of a show of comedy of drama of of whatever and uh i love the aspect of racing because depending on how hard i work how fast i am you know and and getting that and doing it you're gonna see it you see it literally in the results you know what i mean yeah. and uh i like that that's that's an attainable or a, a goal that i can reach or i can try to reach you know what i mean and and, and fight for compared to you know, even the music industry, it's, a, it, those are, those are tough things. A lot of it has to do with luck, honestly, like making it in acting, making it in the music industry. There's a, a, a million amazing actors out there. There's an, a million amazing bands that nobody hears, nobody gets to hear because they don't have that opportunity to be heard. And, uh, you know, it, it's really like winning the lottery, you know, with, with, with something like racing or being an athlete or being a, you know, a basketball player, whatever it may be, like you have to perform otherwise if you're not performing there's another guy who's going to take your spot yeah. you know what i mean so i think that's what i like about that you know what i mean i have a goal and i can see myself improving you know what i mean i can see myself um getting there and and if i win races nobody can say that i'm not you know a winner nobody can say that i didn't do it you know what i mean right. so, so that's what i'm trying to do what's the what's the difference well, you you told me you said uh, when I went in the broadcasting booth, I was surprised because like I learned just how hard it is and just how much preparation and everything goes into it. What is something from like set life or Malcolm of the Middle, Malcolm in the Middle, uh, as well as race car driving that people don't really realize? I, the same experience that you had in the booth, I think you'd probably be privy to some things, you know with a hit sitcom and also with driving extremely fast around a track that pe I think people just kind of like have a purely, they know it's hard work, but it's also like yeah. a lot of glamor. It's just like, Oh, I'm a star actor. I'm famous. Oh, I just am driving really fast and I'm super yeah. cool. And it's like, what is the thing that people do not realize about those two fields? You know, an interesting thing that, that I, I've talked to people about, or I, I think I, I, I was, we were talking about today even is, there's so many actors, there's so many, you know, people who, who work their whole lives, you know, they'll do local theater, they'll do anything they can to, to get to act. 
for free. And then they start getting paid. They start doing things. They get on TV shows. And there's something about actors. They're never happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what that is. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but I, I would say, you know, the racing, unless someone's physically been in a race car, you know, and I'm not talking like, you know, driven on a racetrack. Like I'm saying you're racing at a top level. You have no idea the pressure, the, sh- the, the stress, the, the, uh, physicality that come to racing a car at a, at a top level, you know what I mean? And there's really no way to, to, to prove maybe a naysayer, you know what I mean? To, of, of, of what it takes to, to be a driver. I think everyone thinks that they could be a race car driver. Everyone thinks they can go fast, right? Oh, I drive, mm-hmm. I drive, I've, I've got a Corolla and I hit the, you know, you know, I go fast around the corner getting onto the freeway. No, you know, like it's, it's a different mindset. You know, there's a lot of mental preparation that goes into it. A lot of, you know, you got to keep your cool. You got to, you know, the races are long physicality in it is insane you know like, you had an uh, injury you you know you had yeah, a big you injury hurt. yeah yeah it, you know but i don't know i i think one thing that i can tie the two together you know i don't know if that was part of your question but like uh, that maybe my acting career could help in the racing aspect is i've had to perform you know on the moment, like on set, if I'm doing, or I grew up doing theater, local theater uh, or uh, Broadway and stuff like that here in New York. And uh, I, you have to perform like, so there's a pressure, you know, being in a band and going on stage and, and opening for a big artist, you know, you've got to perform in front of people. Racing's the same thing. Like it's in you, but you can't let your nerves kind of overwhelm you. You can't, you know, you got to be able to stay cool and calm and, and, and uh, under the pressure of, of, of competing. And I think that those are the really kind of the only things I can tie together. No, you know, that's a great, that's I, I a great a example. Bit more media training uh, than, <laughs> than maybe some other race car drivers, you know, when they first start, you know, right. but uh, other than that, I can't really correlate too much. Well, to honestly, it. that correlation you shared is, is that's not something I would have thought about. You know, you think ostensibly you might arrive at a conclusion like that, but you know, hearing it from you with that experience, I think adds a lot. And I still I would, get nervous. Don't get me course. wrong. You know what I mean? There's still like, you know, when I get on stage, when I have to present an award, when I have to, you know, I just did an episode of new Amsterdam uh, on NBC. And when I showed up to that set as a guest actor, you know what I mean? I go in there and you know, you're surrounded by the other actors. So that's, you're on their set. You want to do a good job. You don't want to hold them up. You want to perform well. But uh, I, I've proven to myself that I can perform under pressure, and I think that uh, that helps me uh, in the racing world. Nice. Well, I really appreciate you also like staying longer than we had initially, oh, you know, you talked <laughs> about. Um, and with that said, I have like two things that I want to address before we get out of here. Okay. Um, one of them being just like fame. We've talked a lot about business and success. Um, and I think someone like you is a good example of someone who, you know, had like sort of a peak fame and, you know, had some great earnings from that and has turned it into a really like stable and successful life. Um, but fame specifically, like, is it, is it addictive to walk around and have people say, I love you and run up to you, or is it annoying or maybe both, but like, and then also to 20 years later, be like less famous in some capacity. Obviously you probably still get recognized, but you know, it's not 2005 Emmy nomination era. And like, do you, do you kind of like, I think you see some people who really struggle after their like big Hollywood moment and it eats them up that they are not like so famous anymore. And I just wonder your perspective on fame and like, did you love it? Did you hate it? And how do you feel now in your life? You know, I remember I was 12 or 13 years old. So it was right before I got Malcolm and I used to go outside of uh, every day because I come into the city in New York City to uh, do auditions and whatever we were doing. And my mom and I would always go because we we took the bus from New Jersey at the Port Authority, but we'd always stop by TRL, you know, where they did it in Times Square. Mm -hmm. And we'd stand with all the, the other fans and see the celebrities, you know, up there. And I would see some of my favorite stars and we'd wave at them. And I remember going into my agent's office. I was like 12 or 13. And I looked at her and I said, I want to be famous. And she said, no, you don't. I was like, what are you talking about? Of course I do. She's like, you want to be a respected working actor. 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You want to, to be working and people to love your work, but like you don't want the fame. And I never really understood what she was what she was saying. Um, I never minded the fame. But I had a lot of friends who were in the entertainment business, you know, child stars who were famous, and they definitely get addicted to the attention, to the fame. And I think that's why so many child actors go down a bad path is they're trying to fulfill that void. You know what I mean? Once it starts to go away or, you know, your endorphins are always high of people wanting you and loving you and being nice to you and giving you free things and all that kind of stuff. And once that starts to fade, they need something to fill that void. Um, so I would, I would say, you know, fame is an interesting thing. Cause like there, I'm so grateful for the fame that I had because it allowed me to be here today. You know what I mean? It allowed me to have all the opportunities I've had in my life. There's definitely been hard times that are things that come with the fame that are hard. Um, but in that same sense, I, I think, the positive far outweigh the negative for me. You know what I mean? Um, as far as feeling like, you know, I, I have less fame now uh, than I did. And uh, am I trying to strive maybe to get it back? I would say no, not at all. <laughs> it might seem different because I, I'm, I'm still in a, or entering into a, a, a world where people will see me. It, it, you know, I make it into NASCAR, I'm on TV, I'm racing, you have fans, all that kind of stuff. But I'm not trying to be a race car driver or get into NASCAR because I want the fame. I want to be a winner, you know what I mean? And it, it, if that comes along with it, that's part of it. And I've accepted that. Um, but I know I know it's very hard for a lot of people. And I, I, I think it's hard for people to understand why it's hard. Um, but uh I don't know how to explain it. It's 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 an interesting thing. But did you I, ever like run from flocks of screaming fans, or or even like now? Do you like go to get a coffee and someone's like, "Oh my God, Malcolm!" Like you know, how? Well, I, I definitely get recognized still, kind of everywhere I go. I you're not gonna believe this, but Malcolm in the Middle, to this day, is still the number one show in France, and wow. I was just there three weeks ago and literally got chased down the street <sighs> to where police had to come and save me wow. you know what i mean a fan so it, it, that's weird to me because you know I, it, I definitely i get recognized but not like like you said you know 20 years ago when the show was on i, I could, couldn't go anywhere right. you know what i mean but now people are kind of like you look like you look like that guy i'm like yeah you know yeah you know but it's uh it, it's different but i i don't know i i uh i never minded it because if people recognize you, people come up, they ask for a picture. There, there, there's, op there's times where like, yeah, maybe I'm not in the mood. Maybe I'm having a really bad day. Maybe something really horrible happened, you know, to a family member and uh, I'm not in the mood. But at the same time, it's pretty amazing that all around the world, people loved what I did. You know what I mean? Or it was memorable enough to where they recognize me. So my work had an impact on them in some capacity. You know what I mean? So that, so it's a if you think about it from that perspective it's it's pretty cool to think that my work and the effort that i put in touched so many people you know what i mean so i never mind when when people come up you know uh um but yeah i don't know it's uh like i said i'm just me so i only know what it's like to to live my life i don't know what it's like to to maybe not be recognized or, right or, well or, we have you on here because we want to hear about your life so all good i appreciate the perspective <laughs> And I think this would be a good note to end on. We've talked about so much, um, but I think, you know, the core of what brought us here today is what you were doing in motorsports and as a driver. And it hasn't always been like this. Even when you started 20 years ago and racing in the 2000s and all of that, um, motorsports are like, the game has changed. Like, it really has. Uh, I think Formula One, ESPN was paying them five million a year and yeah. now they just renewed the contract they're paying them like 90 million a year wow yeah, um yeah, yeah. f1's blowing up we got the miami grand prix we're getting yep. record attendance down in austin at the um yeah. what is it the u.s grand circuit prix of Americas, yeah. yeah yeah circuit of america there was four hundred thousand people it's, it's the three-day record for f1 and then you got yeah. nascar incredible views um so much is happening you know i was down at daytona like i said yeah. so I can see, but it's it always felt like a little 
niche a little bit like yeah the people in the south watch or whatever and now you know you got michael jordan owns a team yeah. and um shoot when i was when i was down there there's like celebs down on the track you know uh the the grand prix in miami it's like pharrell's here and mayweather's yeah, yeah. here and so like as someone who is getting into this space and is just a fan of motorsports uh what is it like seeing this new you know rise in interest it's it's been amazing i mean when i was racing you know 15 20 years ago or 15 years ago i was racing open wheel cars you know there was champ car and indy car but trying to explain what it was I go, do you know what Formula One is? And people are like, is that NASCAR? So people didn't fully understand it. You know, so I think that show, you know, Drive to Survive on Netflix definitely opened a lot of people's eyes. And I think, you know, growth in motorsports in general, in F1, IndyCar, NASCAR, it's going to bring more people to the other racing sports because once you start to watch it, you really grow to appreciate the sport, uh, getting to know the personalities, getting to know the drivers, you know, finding people that you like, people that you don't like, who's fighting who, the, the behind the scenes storylines really kind of make the season fun to watch. And uh, so I'm I'm thrilled, you know, to be getting back into racing, you know, with it with it being definitely on a on a huge upswing of, of popularity. Um, but uh, but I don't know. I I, I think it's great. You know, I, I like I said, you know, Formula One's success will definitely help IndyCar, will definitely help NASCAR, will definitely help sports car racing. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully, hopefully continues to grow and we can continue to do it for, for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we'll be looking out for Munez Racing. Um, I really appreciate you joining today. I mean, you got a lot to say. You're a really interesting guy. Sorry if I ramble. <laughs> I want rambling on this podcast. This is the first episode and you know, I want, I want conversations like this. You really help yeah. set the tone. So like, thank, thank you for joining. Thank you for talking for, it's been almost an hour, a couple minutes oh, wow. shy. Um, <laughs> and I wish you the best, you know, in, you. in thank racing, so um, in avoiding those crowds in France. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'll look for you in NASCAR. You said it here, you will be in NASCAR next year. So be dri- I'm going to be driving. I'm going to hold you to that. All right. All right. <laughs> all right thank, thank you, you. So much, man. all right thank one. you you too that's a wrap for the first episode of my other passion love frankie munez love that conversation i hope you did just as much thank you for coming listening i'm really excited to go on this journey with all of you be sure every wednesday tune in we're going to come with a lot of great guests we're going to have a lot of great conversations i want to shout out my producer daniel myrick I want you to make sure that you're reading and following FOS everywhere and make sure you do the same for this podcast. I'll see you next Wednesday.